change again? We has entered May, but there is still no signal about the test flight activities that are about to take place early this month as mentioned before. Indeed, Flight 4's launch date has slipped to the end of May, and the main reason might be SpaceX's slowness in cooperating with regulators, particularly the FAA. So why does this happen? Will it impact negatively on the upcoming flight? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Starship Flight 4's timeline has had significant changes in recent months. Everything started with the sharing of a YouTuber named Ellie in Space on March 18, Starship and Super Heavy Vehicles are preparing for upcoming flights as SpaceX seeks to increase their launch cadence throughout the year. Me thinks Ship 29 and Booster 11 flight could be as soon as April. A few moments later, Elon Musk replied to her with a very short answer, hopefully. However, the other users emphasized their doubts about the feasibility of this date. Although hardware readiness is not a big matter for SpaceX after three Starship test flights, the procedures with the regulator have never been simple for the company at all. So, it's time to switch to a more firm prediction. On March 19, at the Satellite 2024 conference in Washington, SpaceX President and Chief Operating Officer Gwynne Shotwell said about the possibility of a flight in about six weeks from then. That means Flight 4 could happen in early May. This statement appeared to be accepted by the majority of SpaceX fans because, as she said, SpaceX was still studying the data after Flight 3. Clearly, we have no idea about when SpaceX will submit its Flight 3 final mishap investigation report to the FAA and when the mishap investigation will be closed. But Kelvin Coleman, FAA Associate Administrator for Commercial Space Transportation, still expected the investigation report would be delivered to the FAA within a few weeks, like the case of the post-Flight 2 report. And until now, or over one month has gone by, the FAA still confirms that they have not yet received any mishap investigation report for their review. As a result, the Flight 4 Starship flight test continues to be slipped to before the end of May. NASA's Amit Chatria confirms this. The administrator for the Moon to Mars program said that SpaceX was working toward the fourth Starship flight test before the end of May. It sounds like SpaceX hasn't already aligned on the main issues of Flight 3, or the submission will not happen until the vehicles are complete with all the final upgrades and stuff. The cautiousness this time is compulsory in the context that Artemis 3 has been gradually getting closer, and Starship's main goal this year is to master the re-entry ability. To prepare for it, SpaceX set a series of bold goals for Flight 3, including a controlled re-entry of the vehicle into the ocean which could not happen. Thus, the pressure of successful re-entry in Flight 4 is so big, even though it's just to smash into the ocean at a controlled spot. For that reason, it's not hard to explain why the company intentionally prolongs the mishap investigation time. Based on Flight 4's result, the company will consider whether they should try to come back and land super heavy on the tower. Not to mention, they must solve other problems of Flight 3. Unlike the previous flights, Flight 3 is not just ascent and descent, but it also contains the opening and closing of Starship's payload door, a propellant transfer demonstration during the upper stage's coast phase, the first ever relight of a Raptor engine while in space, and flying a new trajectory. Of course, more work results and more analysis needed to be handled, so we also cannot eliminate the potential that the date will slip further to early June, for example. As per Berger's law, aiming for the end of something often slips to the beginning of the next. No matter how much work there is, SpaceX can be able to ensure its rapid fast turnaround between tests. The company is on its track toward Flight 4. It has been proven through numerous updates on Flight 4's stack of Ship 29 and Booster 11. Both parts are currently at the Starbase production site to undergo final work before a potential rollout, integration, wet dress rehearsal, and launch. The latest update on Ship 29 is about work on its thermal protection system. This part plays a vital role to withstand the extreme heat during re-entry from LEO. During the pre-flight tests, such as the static fire test as well as the in-flight test, there were some reports related to the fall of heat shields. Ship 29 is the first one to get the chance to get through max re-entry heating, according to Elon Musk, so we really need an extensive replacement of the heat tiles. The blue tile adhesive has been used since Ship 24 and now it isn't holding up to the company's expectations. Therefore, many areas on Ship 29 had to remove tiles and apply new red glue when installing replacement tiles. 
The use of glue offers several benefits. Glue can be lighter than traditional mechanical fasteners like bolts or screws. This reduction in weight can contribute to overall fuel efficiency and payload capacity. Some types of adhesive can provide additional thermal insulation properties, enhancing the heat resistance of the tiles and improving their effectiveness at protecting the underlying structure from the extreme temperatures experienced during re-entry. In addition, it can create a smoother surface compared to mechanical fasteners, reducing aerodynamic drag during flight. This can contribute to improved fuel efficiency and overall performance. Some opinions say that applying glue may be faster and more straightforward than installing mechanical fasteners, potentially reducing manufacturing time and costs. So why does not SpaceX apply the glue for the entire TPS of Starship? Well, SpaceX is now using welding robots, allowing workers to click each tile into place within seconds. This saves more time than applying adhesive, which would require precision and could significantly slow down the process. Due to the high adhesion, it would take hours to remove the tiles glued directly to the ship's hull. So with the current clip system, making tiles broken to remove and replace within a minute will be easier. Booster 11 is about to get a little taller when the hot staging ring has been taken into Mega Bay. The hot staging ring allows exhaust to escape during the staging maneuver of Starship. This shows the vehicle is virtually completed ahead of rolling out to OLM. In the ground support system, the new horizontal tank farm at SpaceX's Starbase is currently being tested ahead of Starship Flight 4. On the morning of April 30, there were some tests on the sticks and liquid oxygen pipes, and one of the subcoolers was frosty and the tower vented. Following those tests, the left chopstick arms also experienced one last test after the replacement of the actuator. Honestly, we are glad to see the rapid pace of preparations for Flight 4, but even more glad to hear the news that the propellant transfer test appears to have been successful. NASA's Amit Chatria also noted that the intertank cryogenic propellant transfer test on the third Starship flight last month was successful by all accounts, although analysis of data from it is ongoing. During that flight, SpaceX performed an in-flight propellant transfer demonstration under a NASA tipping point contract awarded in 2020. SpaceX planned to transfer at least 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen from a header tank to the main tank within the Starship upper stage while in space. The next major milestone is a demonstration planned for 2025 where two Starships will dock in orbit, with one transferring propellants to the other. Plans for that have passed a flight system review examining the overall mission architecture and key subsystems, among other topics. In that mission, a target Starship will launch first and go into orbit, followed three to four weeks later by a Chaser Starship. The two vehicles will dock with the Chaser transferring propellants to the target. After the demonstration, the two Starships will undock and deorbit. Shatria said SpaceX has some work ahead of that test, including understanding the slosh of propellants in the tanks as Starship maneuvers as well as the amount of settling thrust needed once the vehicles are docked to ensure propellant flows between them. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.